Now we're just going to put up a quick slide here before I introduce our next uh, speaker. We're going to be talking about our new program, the Digital Accelerator Program. They have it. Now this is the gateway to digitalizing your business. And all you do is register now at dx.com.my to access your business digital needs and links to guidance, capacity building programs and incentives. Just take a screenshot or you can uh, scan the QR code right here, right now, and uh, you'll be on your merry way. <laughs> and of course, for those of you who just joined us, welcome once again. This is the SMA Digital Summit 2020. Don't forget to share this live stream with your friends, your family, your co-workers, colleagues on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with our official hashtags. That's 100 Go Digital and hashtag SME Digital Summit. I hope you guys are having a good time so far. Okay, and with that, we are going to welcome our next speaker who's already on screen with me here. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Hi, uh, we have Brian here. Now, Brian is actually the CEO of Syntax Technologies in Durham, Berhan. Hi, Brian. How's your week? Hi. Oh, good. Uh, uh, excited to be here to be everyone and share my experience on uh, e-commerce. Exactly. And we're so happy to have you here. I'm sure everyone is dying to uh, take a look at your presentation here. Now, we're going to be talking about the awareness of e-commerce challenges and solutions. Now, uh, while everyone is eagerly embarking towards e-commerce, you should have a glance of challenges that are waiting ahead and get prepared. Now, this presentation promises to be something that not even e-commerce gurus will tell you. So okay. we are super excited to see what you have in store. Uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and share your screen? Sure, no problems. Okay, so whenever you're ready, uh, take it away. You have 40 minutes in total, 30 minutes for your presentation, and I'll be back here for the last 10 to help you with your Q&A. Okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, I'm Brian here. Um, once again, thank you for watching. Uh, today, I'm not going to talk about SGL because normally when you see me, I'm talking about SGL and also e-commerce. So today, my topic is on awareness of e-commerce challenge and solution. So let's have a look. Okay, first of all, before we go into um, e-commerce in details, of course, we need to know what, uh, which uh, so-called uh, marketplace is number one in Malaysia. Well, since quarter three of 2019, okay, Malaysia number one marketplace now is Shopee, okay? Over to Lazada, okay, because for the past few years, all, all the ways is Lazada, okay? So, now, if you are e-commerce seller in any of this marketplace, of course, you know that at least you need to go for Shopee, Lazada, or even Lelong. Okay, so take a look of this, take a picture, so, so that you know that in Malaysia, who is number one, let's say you're going to venture into Singapore, Lazada is number one, Thailand is Lazada, Philippines is Lazada, but Vietnam is Shopee, and also, of course, Indonesia is Tokopedia. Okay, now, then, when we talk about e-commerce, always this first things going to your mind is the 11-11 sales happened in China, okay? For last year, it's 162 billion ringgit Malaysia have been made within one day. Imagine you are part of this deal, how much you can get, right? Now, so that's why people will look at this as the guideline and they are moving towards to this uh, situations that want to join into e-commerce because there are a lot of opportunity. Well, is it true that it's so good? So let's have a look on Malaysia. So in 2018, 11-11, Lazada alone have made over 100 million, okay? And this record have been break in 2019. That means every year, e-commerce for marketplace or even for some of my customers, they are doing their own e-commerce website is keep on growing. And what is the trend, okay? Under world pay e-commerce projection for Southeast Asia, okay? For Malaysia from 2019 until 2023, the projections will be 84%, okay? Can you imagine, okay? From now, if you are not e-commerce seller, well, I think you better have another think of it, whether you want to join and how to join in. Okay, so 84% from 2019 until 2013. That is a big deal. Okay, so e-commerce is the next thing that you need to know. Okay, of course, um, from my experience, my personal experience, uh, e-commerce, uh, there is another boost for e-commerce, of course, because of the MCO. 
if you still remember, starting from, I think, uh, in March, we already started the MCO. Now we are under another uh, trend that MCO might be coming back. So a lot of SME have been suffered because of MCO. They cannot open their shop and, and they have a lot of uh, problems uh, of the funding and, and, and cash flow and so on. So imagine what happened if a second phase of MCO come back. The same things happen. You cannot open up your shop and you cannot do anything. But if you still remember, e-commerce is allowed to open the company and logistic is still running. Meaning that if you are under e-commerce, you still can run your business without any interruption. And because everyone is staying at home, guess what they want to do, okay? Boring of looking at the TV, they'll go online shopping. So that's why MCO become a boost of e-commerce. Now, for, for in Chinese word, there is something called Weiji. Okay, Weiji means whenever there is a, a challenge or dangerous, there is an opportunity. So that's why when we look at MCO, how you turn yourself to from the dangerous part, okay, from challenges to become opportunity. So have you thought about e-commerce? Well, everyone know 11.11. I think everyone bought something in 11.11. Because why? Because the discount is tremendous. If you don't want to, uh, you, you are not in e-commerce, you are not uh, in, like to do online shopping, but on 11.11, I'm sure that you will go up there in the, any of this Lazada Shopee and buy something because it's too cheap, okay? So that's why if you are a company, are you ready for 11.11, okay? So of course, to a lot of new uh, comers, they will have this a lot of uh, questions that uh, how to do e-commerce and so on. So well, outside that, there's so many, so many uh, e-commerce talk. Just browse through your Facebook, just browse through any of the uh, online uh, seminars is available. Even for uh, MDAC, they keep on having different seminars for e-commerce. Today, I'm not going to talk about any of this, how to go for e-commerce. I'm not going to tell you how to become number one because I'm not a e-commerce guru, okay? But in another way, I'm involved in e-commerce is on the solution, okay? Well, you can be number one in selling in Lazada. You can be number one in selling in Shopee, but there will be challenges waiting ahead. So for those newcomers, no worry. Before you step into e-commerce, now what I'm going to do is I'll tell you the challenges you will be facing soon, okay? And what is the solution? Okay, so now just now we see that 11 is the sweet dream for everyone, for all the e-commerce seller. But at the same time, it's also a nightmare for them. Why I say so? Can you imagine this? The logistic, okay? All the parcel that you want to send out, you're not able to send out. And later on, there's so many returns, cancer, delivery, failure. And later on, when the statement come in, you need to key into the accounting software and so on. This is all the challenges. So for normal people, for laymen, we only look at the bright side. Wow, 11, 11 for all e-commerce. Okay, they're getting rich. Okay, fat that already. But for behind the screen, behind the curtain, a lot of people are crying because at the same time, the boss is making money, but the account people is crying, the logistic people is crying, okay? So let's have a look on what is going to happen soon. But before that, okay, just for sharing, okay? Beside of Marketplace, there's a new trend coming up. It's called Facebook Live, okay? Well, Facebook Live, is it an e-commerce? So people are like doing Facebook Live and selling the things, then they will ask people to PM them, then they will record manually and do all the calculations, do all the invoicing, but sometimes they don't even record down or, or, or miss out so many orders. What should they do? My advice, e-commerce. Imagine you're doing a Facebook Live, instead of asking people to PM you, if you have an apps, or even a e-commerce site that you just send the link to them that can 
uh, browse the item list or directly make the order and make payment to you. And this automatically have been knocked off, keep track in that system. Imagine how many hours of work you have saved. Okay. And it is a proper place where they can come back again later on. Imagine now you have a Facebook Live. Okay. Uh, you, you have managed to sell 200 items. But later on, when they want to subscribe a big game or want to, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, purchase again, where they would need to go? PM you again? Don't you think this is not very professional? Okay. And Facebook Live, there's a very unique thing is commission. Okay. I have an experience for Facebook Live customer. Okay. Well, normally, okay, my experience, okay. Normally for one Facebook Live, there are about three person handle for one Facebook Live. Of course, there will be a presenters, okay, that, that, that show you the product and so on. Behind the screen, someone is answering the question and so on. And someone is helping on the uh, product listing and or the screen. So when there is a sales happen behind the curtain, three person handle, that means the sales normally need to pay commission for this three person and the commission a scheme is different okay the presenters may have a higher commission and so on so without a system how to handle all this e-commerce with an accounting system okay we totally have the solution so if you are looking at you are doing facebook live you are doing e-commerce stay tuned i tell you the solutions okay now when we talk about e-commerce there's two things that you need to look into the first thing is web store versus marketplace, okay? So when you firstly join into uh, e-commerce, should you develop your e-commerce store, okay? When we talk about e-commerce store, we talk about Shopify, WooCommerce, of course, SiteGiant, okay? If you want to develop any e-commerce, okay, market uh, e-commerce store, well, this three are highly recommended. Why I highly recommend it? Because at the end of the day, all these three uh, platform, we are able to sync all the orders back to your accounting system. And what I mean accounting system, I emphasize on SQL accounting system that Desmond just presented to you, okay? We are able to connect and a link to all this marketplace, okay? So SQL user, don't wait, PM or, or, or just write down your questions on any of this, uh, if you are using any of this platform, how to do that, okay. Now, versus uh, marketplace. So which one go first? Different people may have different point of view, okay. Of course, different guru will have their own theory on that. Well, personally, if you do not intend to invest a lot, okay, or you, you want to try out, okay, what you want to do, I will recommend you start with uh, uh, some um, marketplace first, let's say Lazada, Shopee because there will be, there's almost zero investment involved. Just create your account, then you can already can start selling. Get yourself familiar first with how to do an e-commerce because uh, lots of people, when they want join in uh, e-commerce, the first thing come to their mind is they will get rich soon without doing anything. Just open the shop, then all the money will come in. Now that seems like it's not too logic or, or, or realistic, right? Because you still need to do a lot of lots of study and so on, and how to uh, 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 improve yourself, okay, compared with your competitor, okay. At the end of the day, well, I, I do I do uh, uh, suggest that you have your own uh, marketplace, uh, not say marketplace, your own web store, where you can even to control the pricing and have different pricing for different customer, okay. Now. Here come to the main point of 10 challenges after being online seller. The first thing, okay, product listing to multiple marketplace. Now, as I mentioned just now, of course, Lazada, okay, Shopee is the two things that you must open up your store over there. Uh, we don't have 11 straight and maybe your web store, okay, your web store is another place. Imagine now you have 100 new items. Without any system, what are you doing? You need to go to Lazada, okay? Upload this 100 item, key in all the information, upload all the photo. Well, after a few days, okay, few hours, you finish Lazada. Then you have Shopee, okay? Go into Shopee, repeat the whole process again. Okay, you finish the whole thing. Then 
web store, your own e-commerce web store, go in again, upload again. So whenever you have a new product and 100 product, you need to do 300 times. Okay, is it a challenge for you? Well, to be it is a challenge. Okay, so what you should do, you should get a system. Well, outside there, there's so many systems, even some system is free, okay, that allow you to do product listing to multiple marketplace. Okay, for example, okay, like what I'm sharing now is is a platform called Payrecon. Okay, of course you can directly subscribe from me. Okay, that is okay, side talk. So uh, you upload your product into this platform, and from this platform, you can directly upload to different marketplace with a click of button. You do 100 times, then for the others, click, 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 all the platform updated. Okay, now we have customer even up to 39 marketplace account. It's all controlled within one platform under our pay recon platform. Okay, this is the thing. Okay, the first thing is how you manage product listing. Now, you know how to handle there must be a platform that able you to upload all your product from one place to multiple place. Okay, secondly, account management. Okay, account management means uh, just now I'm sharing, you must have uh, Lazada and Shopee. Okay, what if you have three Lazada, two Shopee plus your web store? Okay, that means you have six accounts. So normally I know what you're doing, okay? You open up different web browser for different web store. So uh, browser one, your Google Chrome, okay? Oh, today, uh, now I have three orders from Lazada A account. Then I open up browser two, there's another two orders from uh, Shopee. Then there's five order from web store. So you open up so many screens, okay? Some people even have different uh, staff handling different account. Okay, every they have six stuff. Okay, using their own computer to handling all this order. Well, why don't you use one platform and manage all the orders within that platform alone? Okay, so meaning that without going to others web browser or without go to other places from one places you are able to manage all the orders because now you are centralizing all the orders within one platform. Okay, so we can manage to do that. Okay, you should do that, okay? The incorrect payment. Well, I don't want to mention which uh, marketplace or even your own web store. Will there be a possibility of incorrect payment? Okay, what do you mean incorrect payment? Meaning that, let's say the item you sold is 100 ringgit, but you only managed to retrieve back 70 ringgit. And what happened? You can't retrieve back a single cent. So what you should do, you need to do something called reconciliation, okay? That means you must understand which orders have been paid, how much have been paid, and which order have not paid. Is there any dispute or not? So that's why you need to know all these things, okay? Doing reconciliation, okay? Well, for this one, I'm sure you, okay? I'm sure you, anyone who handling your account, they are praying that there is something that can help them to do this reconciliation automatically to make sure the payment is accurate. Imagine you're selling very good, okay? One day you can sell about 300, 1,000 orders. Boss is so happy. But what if I tell you all this order, you don't get a single cent, but you already delivered the product. Are you sure that? You're making money? No, you are not. So making sales is not the uh, major objective. Getting the money back is what you need to do. Correct. Okay. So make sure your sales and the payment received and the payment received is accurate. Okay. Then if there is any dispute, okay, touch wood, if there is any dispute at all, what you need to do, you need to file in dispute, okay, to the marketplace. And when you file in a dispute, so what you need to do, you retrieve, you receive a so-called ticket number, okay, just like you call telecom, you complain about your uh, streaming, you complain about your Unify, then what you get, 
you get a ticket number so that later on you need to follow up. But do you have your Excel file ready for this, right? I'm sure that you have your Excel file ready, okay? And what happened? Your Excel file disappeared because there are so many complaints or your staff don't even have time to follow up, okay? When you have time to follow up, there is no one help you doing your sales, no one help you doing your packaging. So for online seller, if you're making a lot of sales, your staff normally is so busy with the packaging, okay? So they don't have time to all do all these reconciliations and, and follow up with the dispute, okay? What if, what if I told you, we will have a system to help you to keep track of any of this uh, uh, complaint or dispute, and it will automatically disappear when you receive the payment. This is so automatic, okay? Let the system run by itself and then follow up according to the system. Now, double sending, okay? We have a lot of experience of double sending, okay? Don't know why your staff always tends to wrongly pack the things, double pack the things, and no one even have a alert about this problem, okay? So that must be a way to stop double sending. Why? Because imagine you receive two parcel, but where you only purchase one, do you return back to your seller? Well, I hope you do so if you're honest people, but out there, okay, there's not many people as honest that are uh, like you, okay? People who may not, okay, return back to you. So what, what will happen? The seller will be making loss, okay? But they don't know. Why? Because the stock double sign. So they have the order, they receive the money, but why the stock have less than you expected? Because it's double deduction, correct or not? So that's why you need to take note of double sending. So what if a system that able to allow you to scan your parcel and alert you when their tracking number have been scanned before? That means by doing this, we are able to prevent double sending. Now, this is a great thing, okay? No need to go and check one by one. Just scan, 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 deep, alert you. Okay, this is how easy it is. Now, pick up confirmation. Well, normally courier service come over to pick up the parcel and then you need to chop and sign over their side. Okay, at this point of time, normally they need to update back the marketplace. So what if the parcel is missing? Then of course you need to file this bill and so on. Why not we put the other way around and we make up a pick up confirmations uh, well, at this place, we call it a manifest list that allow your courier service to sign back. This is a proof when there is a dispute, correct or not? That means someone have picked it, pick up the parcel so that there will no argument later. Okay, missing parcel. Parcel pick up the, when they have not updated the marketplace because in the status, okay, Online seller, I think you all know this, the status will be, you're still waiting, but the things actually have delivered to the buyer. So argument again, what you need to do, okay? So look at the status, it's still ready to ship, but actually the things have been delivered. So the courier manifest just now will be very useful. Missing parcel, delivery failure, not receiving the parcel, so now this time is actually a delivery failure. You will not get your money, of course, okay? But you should get back your parcel. So are you your parcel coming back in time? Is there any missing in the delivery or when during the return, your parcel disappeared? So you need to know the status. So that's why you need a system to keep track of this. You don't receive your money, make sure you get the money. Then you don't get the money, make sure you get back your stock, correct or not, okay? This is fair. So that's why there should be a system handling for you. Okay, incorrect shipping charges, okay? Don't know why, okay? You, the, the, the buyer have paid four ringgit, okay, for the shipping charges, but Marketplace charge you seven ringgit. Now, this is again, another things that always happen, right? But do you know these things happen? Difficult, 
okay? Because you need to reconcile again. So I'm keep on talking about reconciliation because there is a checking involved. So anyone doing checking, eh? no lah, okay, we only handle the sales or oh, the backing is so tiring already. No one do the uh, uh, reconciliation. I think my outsource accountant doing, well, I told you no one will do for you. Eh? Okay, they will not do the reconciliation for you because this is not their job. Okay, you have so many few hundreds and thousands of invoice to key in and you want them to do reconciliation again, eh? how much you pay them. Okay, no one will do for you. So why not get a report automatically from there? Okay, we see that like this, okay, customer don't pay anything, but the marketplace charge you for it. So there is the difference already, right? So this will alert you that there is a difference. So now you think back, is this because this period there is a promotion going on or special activity? Because if not, then it should be the bottom one, the four and five. The customer payment, and the charges by the marketplace should be exactly the same without any differences. Correct or not? This is fair, right? So it alerts you. No activity, got difference, file this, okay? Complain, okay? So now, updating invoice to accounting system. Okay, like what have been uh, uh, explained by Desmond, SQL accounting software, okay, do integrate with any other software that willing to integrate with us. We welcome everyone, okay? So at the same time, from Lazada, it will not directly go into your SQL accounting system or your accounting software. It need to go through a third party. So this is the three, okay, software that normally we recommended. Zappi, I think this morning, Adrian is there, okay? Is from Zappi. Okay, pay recon, you can get from me. And of course, Site Giant. Okay, these three platforms all can sync the orders and through the platform itself and sync to accounting software. Imagine, okay, imagine now you're having like, okay, uh, minimum, like, okay, we talked talk about 6,000, okay, that is our basic package, okay, 6,000 order per month, okay, meaning that your staff need to key in 6,000 invoice into the accounting software one by one. Okay, you don't do that, right? You do a lump sum. Then you have problems. How about your stock control? Okay, everyone know that when we do a, do a, a online selling, stock control is a important thing. So that's why you need to make sure your stock control is correct, is accurate. So when we talk about integrations from the marketplace into accounting software, we are not only talking about accounting, we talk about stock control. We'll sync the stock into SQL sales invoice that come with stock control, okay? Now, I think Brian, I know that, okay, invoice have been synced to accounting software, but what about payment? Payment still need to manually key in, okay? Also very troublesome, okay? Then, because of your request, okay, what if I tell you, okay, just click these two buttons, submit to account, we'll import all the orders automatically, few thousand, 10,000, no problem, one click of button into SQL accounting to become a sales invoice with stock control. And for payment wise, click another button called knockoff invoice, and it will sync all the payment into SQL customer payment and match back the orders. This is the thing, okay? It is not lump sum, uh, we don't do lump sum things. Uh. We directly sync into SQL accounting system and knock off the payment according to the orders automatically. We have three, 6,000 invoice, I'm sure that you have 6,000 payment. That means 12,000 transaction, your staff need to key in, okay? Then what happened? Your staff resign because it's so scary. What if I give you, okay, not say I give you, okay, you subscribe to the system and just, just two click of button, that, that, set the 12,000 transaction, okay? So you keep on asking, why my staff uh, never do this reconciliation? It's so difficult, man. It is not difficult, uh, okay? Because it is troublesome, okay? Imagine this is your uh, marketplace statement where your staff need to look at this Excel file, row by row, 
key in one by one and check one by one for 12,000 row. Okay, not say your staff, yourself as the owner, but are you willing or are you managed to do this? I'm not quite sure, okay? Maybe you're small than possible, okay? So small means less than 6,000, we consider small already, okay? So normally our customer will have like 10,000 orders per month, 12,000, okay, even 20,000 order per month. That is how many transactions to key in, okay? So let's say now you are very small, okay, only like, 10 orders, maybe uh, one, one month is about 300 orders. Should you have this? Okay, then I'm asking you another question is, are you willing to risk your payment and stop? Okay, so that's why reconciliation is the things. Now, insider, okay, is there anyone uh, realize this? Uh, when there's a lost parcel claim process or damage parcel claim process, right? Lost parcel, okay. Shopee, now the a uh, uh, duration is 30 days, meaning that 30 days uh, you need to launch the claim process. What happened if more than 30 days? Then you should ask Shopee. Meaning that now not only you need to make your sales, but at the same time reconciliation is so scary because it's 30 days. Okay, and then some of the things not even can claim. Okay, 30 days. Okay, five days. This is scary. That means your online e-commerce transaction need to be so accurate. Lazada, 25 days. Okay. Are you managed to do this? If you're not managed to do this, it is a high risk business for you. Okay. But no worry, of course, because there is solutions. Okay. Because of the reconciliation part, we are able to keep track of it that you can directly know what happened to all your orders, okay? Then just now we have the manifest list for you to give us a proof when you launch a dispute. Then you do not require to go to different career service company to track your orders. From one platform, you're able to track all the uh, logistic and career status for your parcel. So nice, okay? With this too, this is a very concrete evidence already, right? So. This is important. Now, the whole idea, okay, is to make sure you get your money or your product. This is one of the example I like to share, okay? This is one of our customer, okay? What happened? They are underpaid 200,000, okay? Can you imagine this happened to you, okay? And that but at that part of time is 90 days, you know? Okay, we're able to do a backtrack, okay, to get back all the orders and make sure which order have paid, which order have not paid. And we managed to claim back more than 100,000. Without the help of the software, there is this 200,000 fully burned. Okay, so that's why digitalization, we are only not only talking about a whole concept, okay. We need to go up to accounting software, and all the process or SOP that related. You are doing a e-commerce, you don't not only need a good accounting software, of course, SQL, highly recommended, also can get by me, and also another platform that handle and link together, okay? You should not get a system where I need to contact to a, a person to for this uh, system A, a B person for a system B, and then they don't talk to each other. So when we talk about digitalization, it needs to be under one roof, okay? All systems need to talk to each other. And of course, your supplier need to know how to handle all this system. Well, until now, I think you still uh, may have a lot of questions. You're, you're, you're welcome to leave it your questions over the uh, Q&A sessions. And of course, later on, if you want to have a look on the system and or contact me directly, you are welcome to do so. Pass back to uh, our uh, MC.
All right, fantastic. Now we do have a few questions that just came in. Now this one is actually in our chat box again. So once again, guys, if you have any questions for our speaker, please, please, please leave them in the Q&A box. It's right beneath your screen. It says Q&A right there. Click that, put in your question, leave your name, and we'll get right to it. So this one is from Wonjun. Now Wonjun likes to know, do I need to have a compatible inventory management system in order to use uh, PayRecon software? Uh, in order to use the double sending feature? Okay, uh, to me, you should have a compatible uh, inventory control system. Well, uh, under uh, for us is SQL accounting system because SQL accounting system itself have already have the inventory control. Okay, at the same time, uh, let's say pay recall, uh, uh, ZP or any uh, like uh, side giant also can already can synchronize into SQL accounting system. But one thing to take note, okay, I, I People always have this problem is when they do e-commerce, they always forgot about their offline sales, okay? So imagine you have offline sales that they're coming in. That means this on offline sale is not in your marketplace sales that sync to uh, your accounting software. So I always recommend when you do your stock inventory control, add one more thing is called location. That means that you should have a virtual location of online and offline. Imagine you only have one uh, warehouse, you have, item A100 unit. So what you need to do, you should separate this 100 unit to like 70 unit is for online, 30 unit is for on, offline. So meaning that when you do online sales where from Lazada, Shopee, it sync into your accounting system, the deduction will be on the 70 because we're according to location. So when it finish already, your online will stop, okay? But of course you will not wait until it becomes zero, then you go and stop it. Before it reach 70, you, update the quantity again. That means you do a stock transfer from your offline 30, maybe I transfer again 20 to the online so that you will able to do your offline sales, okay? I, I, I always uh, encourage my customer that don't just focus on your online. At the same time, offline sales also important to you, okay? All right, thank you. And I hope, Wenjun, I hope that answers your question. Now, this next one is from uh, Heidi. I think it's Heidi Hood. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. It's a pretty okay. long one. So uh, let's go through this very slowly. For a sustainable marketplace industry, there should be uh, more than a few major marketplaces in Malaysia. With Shopee getting larger and 11th Street becoming less relevant as its market share is diminishing, and there are mm. no new marketplaces getting major traction in Malaysia for the past 12 months, are there any strategic options for SME e-commerce players besides going to Shopee? Oh, well, I think this, you know, to, we, we will need to refer back to MDAC, okay? Because this is far more, uh, the, the scope is too big already. So it, it's not easy for a newcomer to join into as a marketplace seller, okay? Because the platform, the investment involved, the technology involved, it's very huge, okay? As you can see, even 11th Street is getting, uh, uh, less and less powerful uh, nowadays, okay? So that's why uh, it's beyond our level, okay, to contract. That is the government or maybe MDAC that can look into this point, okay? Hey, no problem about that. All right, our next question is, do you have any recommendations for construction or renovation type of businesses to go e-commerce? Okay, uh, well, constructions or maybe renovation service is a service. Uh, if I'm not mistaken for uh, Lazada, they have a special uh, sections uh, only for service, okay? And when we talk about uh, e-commerce, of course, uh, there is, I think there is another platform coming up that only specific on the uh, renovation, okay? That allow a lot of renovation still going on on that platform, but I forgot the name. But at the same time, you don't just focus on the marketplace. Why not you have your own uh, e-commerce platform that enable people to uh, put in orders or inquiry about your service and so on. Then you can get the sales through the e-commerce portal from the outside. Okay, you, maybe you have a standard kind of service that you can easily put on your website and people can pay and, and so on, okay? Okay, I well, hope that answers your question. Our next one is from Jackie. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> so Jackie's question is, do you have any systems that can manage association membership records over a long period of time, including updates and uh, archiving old members' records, uh, the current active members to be integrated with payment system, including FTX and e-wallets, 
Uh, payment also reconciliated to financial person in charge and uh, the membership headcount is about 1,000. Okay, uh, I think just by using SQL alone, okay, you already can manage your membership because we have a lot of association is using uh, SQL accounting system to handle their membership. Okay, for the payment wise, of course, you need to engage a payment gateway, then we can do a linking and, and the whole things can be done through SQL accounting system alone. You do not require to, to subscribe a specific membership program. SQL accounting is good enough. Okay, you can contact me later on on, on this, the details. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're done with that and that. Let's see if we have any other questions for now. Uh, and no. We don't have any more questions. Oh, I think just one just came in. Hang on. Let's see. Oh, okay. No, Jackie just says thank you, by the way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, we don't have any more questions for now. So guys, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to type in uh, in the Q&A box if you have any more questions for Brian's presentation here. Um, okay, so one just came in in the comment section here. Uh, now, this one's from Sharifa. Now, Sharifa is interested in the uh, MSC Cyberport satellite. If, okay, okay, sorry. It's not actually related to your presentation. Okay. <laughs> no Pardon problem. me for that. Okay. Um, but yes, let's, let's give them a couple more minutes. Okay, no problem. If, if, they, if they have any question on SQL accounting system or so, they can ask me directly. Well, I'm also representing uh, SQL accounting system. All right. Okay, so this one just came in, and uh, the question is, Hi, Brian. It relates to yeah. online sales and offline sales. Will the system cater for users to alter the system when they discover a uh, stock out? Yes, no problem. Okay. They, they can, they can. The <laughs> <laughs> Very simply put, no problem. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So this one is from Mahindran. Now, since PayRecon solely monitors sales and accounting, how about service providers? Service provider, uh, I'm not so sure that you are uh, suitable for service provider because for service provider, as I mentioned just now, is as long because our, our, our pay recon job is actually um, synchronized uh, marketplace account orders into the pay recon that into accounting system. For service uh, service industries, normally they just use the uh, accounting software alone. Okay, maybe if you have your own um, uh, e-commerce platform that you want to synchronize with uh, SQL accounting, then we can uh, negotiate, uh, we can discuss on that because as, as mentioned by Desmond, we always welcome any parties or any software, any system, any platform to link to SQL accounting. And it will definitely open up your uh, opportunity because uh, until today, we have more than 230,000 company in Malaysia or in Southeast Asia that already using SQL accounting software. Okay. So there's another one that just popped up in the chat box here. Is PayRecon supported for WooCommerce? Yes, of course. <laughs> I like how short your answers are. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right, well, I think it's the best way to put it simple and straightforward. Yes, it definitely is. Now, Wenjun, once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the Q&A box. Our next one from the Q&A box, uh, box comes from Vix Ng. Mm -hmm. Now, Vix would like to know, will it, be, uh, will it be compatible only to SQL or can it be compatible with QuickBook Online? Okay, uh, it, okay, uh, it compatible to QuickBook Online. Yes. Okay, cool. Mm. But uh, I highly recommend SQL accounting software. Have a look. <laughs> 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 okay, um, let me see. All right. This one is from Senmoli Ramkumar. Senmoli Ramkumar. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Um, so the question is, does Syntech help entrepreneurs in creating their own websites or app development? Uh, pay recon do, not Syntech, okay? But if you engage us, then we can arrange a meeting between you and pay recon, then we are able to help you to uh, create an uh, e-commerce website using WooCommerce. All right, fantastic. Mm. Now, of course, uh, uh, Sen Molly, if you'd like to get in touch with Brian, his, uh, all his um, contact details are on screen right now for you. So just take a picture and you can get in contact with him, send him a message, send him an email, and uh, yeah, he'll be more than happy to get back to you. For no now, problem. we don't have any more questions, and I think we can wrap things up. Um, no problem. Brian, thank, thank you for you your so time. Much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. From all of us at that we are so happy. Watching. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. See you, Brian. See you. Bye. Okay.